Hi everyone, my name is Sing Julie from National Tsinghua University. Today I'd like to share with you the work I did with my research team members, Fang Fengxi, Wei Go Li, Jay Tsai, Ying Yi Qian, and Yong Zhu Zheng. And this work is about public transit passengers' travel-based multitasking behaviors, motives, and challenges. So due to technological advancement and a growing emphasis on efficiency, people today are able to multitask almost anywhere and at any time. One particular type of multitasking that has become increasingly prevalent is multitasking while traveling. However, doing multitasking on public transit can be challenging due to the dynamic nature of the environment, as well as long-standing lack of infrastructural support. So to improve travel-based multitasking experiences via technological support, more research attention on public transit passengers' multitasking behaviors and challenges is needed. So we checked previous studies on travel-based multitasking in public transit domain, and we found that they mainly focused on passengers' activities choices and how external factors affect them. But there is a still limited understanding of why passengers choose to multitask in such an environment and how their reasons for multitasking shape their behavior patterns and the challenges they face. So this research aims to provide its insights on this aspect. So here comes the research questions, and we want to get better understanding of the following two things. The first one is, what are travel multitaskers' behavioral patterns on public transit and the causes underlying them? The second, what challenges to travel multitasking do travel multitaskers frequently encounter? We recruited 30 travel multitaskers and conducted a qualitative study consisting of shadowing, debriefing interviews, and semi-structured interviews. And the formal approach was adopted to observe travel multitaskers in situ multitasking practices and reactions to environmental stimuli during their public chances journey, while the later one was intended to shed light on why they made certain decisions and how they perceived and felt about such decisions and travel experiences. And all the data collected during shadowing and the transcription of interviews were coded, and the data analysis process was guided by Chalmers' grounded approach. And here we got three main findings of the study. The first, we identified four main patterns of travel multitasking behavior and each of which differs in their choice of task at hand, concentration levels, preference for certain taxes, determined in completion tax, and expectation of tax quality upon completion. And the first type is habitual behavior part of the daily routine. And this travel-based multitasking was characterized by the participants' lack of intention to accomplish a particular tax at hand. They perform such tax habitually, spontaneously, and without particular intention. And some didn't recall what they had done during their journeys. Participants who follow this pattern expressed greater awareness that their tax at hand was part of their daily routine and could be stopped and resumed at any time. And the second type is making the most of travel time. Then this pattern of multitasking was motivated by utilizing one's time fully, regardless of task at hand type. And members of this class of participants were quite open about tax choices and tax outcome, and they don't have high expectation about the quality or progression of their tax at hand. And the third type is completing last minute work or clearing work backlogs. And this pattern of travel multitasking was motivated by the participants' heavy workloads and the desire to complete them during the travel. It differs sharply from the two described above in that the importance assigned to completing tasks at hand was very strong, even when performing them caused discomfort. And the last one type is performing tasks suited to public transit rhythm or environment. Participants who are familiar with the temporal rhythm of public transit chose tasks that fit into the time available and defer others until they were on public transit. For example, one participant reported that she preferred listening to podcasts 
during her commute on the metro because the unpredictability of the metro environment enhanced her alertness, enabling her to pay more attention to podcast content. And next, we found that the interference between the task at hand and travel tasks, such as monitoring travel queues, become more severe when the queues are hardly perceived due to the following three reasons. The first is, participants mentioned that the queues they used to rely on for journey monitoring was simply not present, or were unclear or not salient enough for participants to notice and understand clearly. Some participants develop strategies to overcome this challenge, while others simply hard to abort their task at hand. And some participants felt uncertain about when then when to disembark, which caused them to become anxious. And this additional effort negatively affected the quality of their task at hand. And second, we found that even when the cues they relied on were available and clear, participants were not always receptive to them because they were too concentrated on their test at hand. Some participants adjusted their test choice to keep their queue receptivity high, while others used pre-planning to balance test at hand and travel tasks without anything being sacrificed. And the last one is, some participants found it hard to map the cues they received onto their actual travel text. For example, one, moni- one mentions that certain cues, such as information on in-vehicle displays and bus checking apps, tended to be unreliable or inaccurate. It prompted participants to cross-validate information from multiple sources, but this just fragmented their attention and reduced their text at hand performance. And in addition to the both, we also identified three major concerns regarding the constantly changing environmental and interpersonal surrounding in public transit. For example, first, the most frequently mentioned transit environment challenges by participants was executing tasks at hand in moving vehicle with heavy vibration. This negatively affect text quality and could even be dangerous. The vibration made it difficult to keep track of progress when reading and participants had to constantly highlight text to avoid feeling nauseated. In case of severe vibration where there was a risk of falling, participants had to pause their text until the vibration stopped. And second, the high turnover rate of passengers in the small and constrained public transit environment also led to concerns about multitasking. They were worried about their personal belongings, health, and safety, especially because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the previous attack on public metro. These concerns affected their seat choices and distracted them from their tasks at hand. And finally, some participants also expressed concern about their privacy and personal image when they were aware of the presence of many other people on public transit, and they told us that such concerns affected their test choices. And more interestingly, some participants regarded it as a positive pressure to perform tests at hand and say they would deliberately engage in certain activities on a vehicle to present a positive image to other passengers. So to sum up, our findings highlight how travel multitaskers' motives shape their behavior patterns and expectations and how travel multitaskers deal with various challenges and concerns that arise from their text and environment. And we also discuss the potential influences of familiarity and transportation on the level of attention switching. Based on the research results, we come up with several implications for future design and technological facilitation of multitasking on public transit. If you are interested in knowing more about our study, please refer to our paper. Thank you.